Uh, hi, I'm Sergio Rabello. I'm a macroeconomist and I'm a professor at the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University. I've been out of the country for many years and it's always fantastic to, to be back to this beautiful place. Uh, why did you choose a career in economics? You know, I wanted to, I thought about the engineering, but uh, I was very bad at drawing. So <laughs> I was looking for something that had mathematics, but did not have drawing. And, and that was the reason why I, I chose economics. But then when I started, I fell in love with it. I thought it was uh, uh, very exciting, the idea that you could use simple models to try to clarify what goes on in the world and perhaps help design policy. That was very interesting to me. You're presenting a paper uh, later in the afternoon. What is the paper about? Can you give us a brief uh, explanation? It's about forecasting exchange rates. I'm attracted by areas of failure, so it's very difficult to forecast exchange rates. Mm -hmm. And in this paper, my co-authors and I, we go back to an old, uh, an old idea, which is to use relative purchasing power parity and to use real exchange rates to forecast. And, uh, and we find that it works in certain monetary regimes. So that's what the talk is about, is when, when does this forecasting technique work? Okay. Um, you certainly have been in a lot of conferences. How do you feel about the role of conferences and the the journey of a, a young economist, a young PhD student. Do you feel they're very important? Do you feel that there should be more of them? I think conferences are important because knowledge needs to be kept alive. I think knowledge is a little bit like yeast. You know, bakers have to bake every day. Otherwise, the yeast dies and, and then you can no longer bake bread. And knowledge is a bit like that. The way knowledge is kept alive is by having people talk about their work, uh, uh, receiving comments and giving comments to other people it's it's a process that's very important to keep the knowledge alive otherwise the knowledge dies you know it can be in in, in papers it can be in books but uh, it has to be in people so that's the role of these conferences is to bring people together and to allow for the interchange of views and to keep the knowledge alive do you have any particular advice for a young student a young economist that they should look out for should they read a particular book that you like, a particular author you find influential? Um, you know, I think when you, when you are young, uh, if you want to do research, you need to learn the tools of the trade. So, so you really have to go to a PhD program. And it's, it's one of the last apprenticeships in the world. In the Renaissance, if you wanted to become a painter, the way you would do it is you would, you would work in the studio of a, mm -hmm. of a great painter and you'd start by grinding the, the colors. And then, then you'd paint the background, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you paint the skies, and then if you were good one day, you'd be allowed to paint an angel. And uh, research is a bit like that. Yeah, you know, you need to learn the tools of the trade, and, and uh, sometimes when you start doing research, you start as a research assistant of someone else, and, and you do things that are a bit boring. Perhaps you collect data, or but then eventually you might get to paint an angel. You might get to, uh, to do something that informs the world. In one final, final question, do you have any particular inspiration, uh, an older economist, a Nobel Prize winner, that you find particularly important for you? No, lots, lots of people inspired me, but uh, here in Portugal, um, there were two people that were very instrumental to me becoming an academic, and one was Antonio Pinto Barbosa, who was my teacher, and the other one was Antonio, uh, Aníbal Cabac Silva, who was also my teacher, and then when I was incredibly lucky to be their, their teaching assistant, so I got to know them both quite well. And both were important because they were very good, they were very smart and very serious about their work, and, uh, and they really encouraged me to, to become an academic. I really looked up to them.